Quickly hit. One hop, knocked down, recovered by Bronco. Throw. He got it. Oh, my. What a job by Bronco. After the end of the 2021 season, Tampa Bay Rays shortstop Wander Franco signed an 11-year extension with a 12th-year club option that guaranteed nearly $200 million. This essentially doubled Evan Longoria's six-year extension back in 2012. And for a team like the Rays to give a contract of this magnitude knowing their usual team philosophies, it means Franco is a very special player. Well, he didn't need to show much at the big league level to earn this contract, as Franco played only 70 games in 2021. Still, those 70 games were very telling. Since the start of the integration era, among all rookies who played less than 100 games in their rookie season, only four of them produced at least 3.5 war. Carlos Correa, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jordan Alvarez, and Wander Franco. However, among these four players, Franco stands out in a couple ways. He hit way less home runs, had a much lower slugging percentage, but also a much lower strikeout rate. That means he must have walked a lot, right? Well, no, he actually had the lowest walk rate in this group. This is a trend he's continued through the start of the 2022 season, but he's cut down on the walks even more. In a world of three true outcome baseball, Franco's style seems a bit outdated, but there's another shortstop who's been doing this for many years. That player is Tim Anderson. In 2021, Tim Anderson had an on-base percentage of 338, which tied for the 70th highest in MLB. Not that great, but Anderson also hit over 300. In 2021, there were only 14 qualified 300 hitters, and Anderson had the lowest on-base percentage out of all of them. Anderson isn't looking to draw walks. He's trying to make contact, which is why in this group of 300 hitters, Anderson had the sixth most number of singles. However, he only played 123 games in 2021. So if he actually played around 150 games, he'd not only possibly lead the league in singles, he'd likely hit around 25 home runs. This combination has been accomplished only 15 times since 2000. But in 2021, two players had this combination of stats, Trey Turner and Bo Bichette two of the best shortstops in baseball. Looking at their 2021 percentile rankings, something these guys all have in common is low walk rates, with Anderson and Bichette both having chase rates in the lowest percentiles. However, looking at their OPS and OPS Plus numbers, it's clear what these guys are doing is working, despite the low walk rates. Now, let's add in one more player. This is Wander Franco in 2022. While Franco has a chase rate and walk rate similar to 2021 Anderson and Bichette, he's arguably hitting better than 2021 Turner, someone who finished fifth in NL MVP voting last season. This is because despite Franco having a worse on base percentage than each one of these players, his slugging percentage is the highest, which is why Franco's OPS is nearly identical to Turner's 2021 OPS. But interestingly, their OPS plus numbers are wildly different. The main reason for this is because league's slugging percentage and OPS is way down in 2022. So Franco's slugging percentage and OPS being this high in this current league environment is much more valuable than it would have been last season. For context, do you know how many players have played a full season with an on-base percentage less than 335 and an OPS plus of at least 170? One player, John Bass, in 1871. This is a man who served in the Union Army during the Civil War. So with this in mind, Franco's stats may be a bit unsustainable, but that doesn't necessarily mean he will regress a huge amount. Franco's BABIP is 310, nearly identical to his current batting average and his 2021 BABIP. So his quote unquote luck hasn't really changed. The biggest difference between Franco's 2021 and 2022 seasons is the huge increase in isolated power, which can be explained with higher barrel and hard hit percentages. In fact, among players with a strikeout rate of less than 11%, an elite strikeout rate by the way, Franco has the highest hard hit rate and the second highest barrel rate behind the American League Player of the Month, Jose Ramirez. The next three players on this list to have a hard hit rate over 48% are Jordan Alvarez, Mike Trout, and Rafael Devers, who are all striking out 4-5% more than Franco. Which may not sound like a lot, but that's the difference between an elite strikeout rate and an above average one. 
And for all of you visual learners out there, here is this list in chart form. On this chart, you want to be as far to the top left as possible, and Franco's placement proves just how elite he has been at the plate. It doesn't matter that Franco's chase rate is in the 10th percentile, because his whiff rate is in the 85th percentile. Franco is going to make contact whether you like it or not, which means to get Franco out, the pitcher needs to make him ground out or fly out. But here's the problem. Franco's line drive rate is 8% above league average, and his fly ball and ground ball rates are both below league average. Only 12 players have a line drive rate over 33%. Out of these 12 players, only Trey Mancini, Bryce Harper, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. have a higher hard hit percentage than Franco. But again, the biggest difference between these four players is Franco's ability to make contact, even if it doesn't end up as a hit. So this begs the question, what makes Franco so different? Well, since his minor league days, Franco has always been known as a pure hitter, with the potential to develop home run power. His flat swing has always been geared for more line drives, rather than the uppercut fly ball swings that are being used more today. Franco has an 80 grade hit tool for a reason, and he likely wouldn't have this grade if he chose to swing for a higher launch angle. So after looking at all these numbers, let's take a look at a Wander Franco at bat. Here he is versus Matt Cook on April 26, 2022. First pitch is a cutter that Franco can't do anything with. The next pitch is a fastball, which judging by his annoyed look, Franco believes he could have done something with. Slowing down the swing, it looks like Franco gets the barrel just under the ball. The next pitch is a cutter that fools Franco as he turns it over for a foul ball. So on a 1-2 count, Cook could do a few things. Considering Franco had struck out earlier on a fastball high and away, that's certainly an option but he could also throw a slider in the dirt. Well, they decide to go fastball in, but Cook misses his spot and Franco crushes the high fastball well out of the zone for a home run. As many batters have altered their swings to elevate their launch angles, high fastballs have gotten tougher to hit, not only due to the uppercut nature of these swings, but because pitch velocities have risen in the past couple decades. Franco has always had a different mindset. As a teenager, it was clear Franco had the ability of spoiling good pitches for foul balls, but he also needed to learn what pitches to take. Franco figured it out after a few seasons in the minor leagues, using his own hitting philosophy. Really make sure you see a pitch you want to hit, not just swing at balls. Look for a pitch you want to hit and get the hands through to make good contact. Seems like a basic philosophy, but because Franco's bat to ball skills are so good, he's hitting pitches that the average batter shouldn't be hitting. Like this fastball, Franco turned into a home run. All right, let's look at one more at bat. September 1st, 2021. Franco is facing Garrett Whitlock, arguably the best reliever on the Red Sox. On the first pitch, Franco lays off a changeup at the bottom of the zone for a ball. Then he gets another changeup, this time in the zone, which he fouls off. Next pitch is another changeup in the same spot, which Franco fouled off again. Okay, so after three straight changeups, Whitlock needs to throw something else. On the 1 2 pitch, Whitlock threw a 97 miles per hour fastball right past Franco, but it was too far inside. 2 2 pitch, Whitlock tries to throw another inside fastball, but he leaves it over the plate and Franco fouls it off. So, Franco has fouled off a fastball and a couple changeups, meaning he'll probably continue to foul off those specific pitches. But, Whitlock has another pitch he hasn't shown. The slider. Whitlock left the slider over the plate and Franco used his speed to stretch this hit into a double. In 2021, Franco hit well against fastballs, but he was even better against breaking balls. Wander Franco's time in MLB has been brief, but he's already made quite the impact. Ray's ownership pledged Franco a big contractual commitment with the hopes he becomes a superstar and surpasses Evan Longoria as the greatest Rays player of all time. Comparing Franco's first 91 career games with Longoria's, the numbers are very similar. Both of these guys were once top prospects, but the team's commitment to Franco is much larger than Longoria. A very significant gesture that shows just how much they believe in Franco's talent and potential. Franco isn't the conventional 
conventional modern hitter who bats for launch angle. He's always looking to make contact, and if he continues to hit extra base hits and play as a 900 OPS hitter, then who cares if he doesn't draw walks? His bat-to-ball skills allow him to make contact with pitches other batters either lay off or swing through. Also, as he matures and grows more accustomed to MLB pitching, his walk and strikeout rates should theoretically stabilize to what they looked like in the minor leagues. In that scenario, Franco's OPS will easily be over 900 for many seasons to come. There are so many young, talented players currently in MLB, but despite his age, Franco is already looking like one of the best hitters of his class. I'm very excited to see what he does for the rest of the season, because he proves there are still many different ways to be successful as a baseball player. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.